First of all, uh, thank you, you, Robert, for having me here. Thank you, Adorama, for hosting this event. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, it's very exciting to talk a little bit about my work and a little bit my, about my life, uh, which is uh, part of the story. Where I am now uh, it started uh, a while back. So I'm going to start showing a little bit about my story which is where I came from and how I end up here in the US. Uh, this, is a, this is moving. Uh, I have a question. The slideshow is keep going. How do I stop so that? See the controls on the lower left hand? No, it's not. Oh, OK. All right. Uh, we started here. So. Uh, I was born in this little town, in a mining town in Minas Gerais, called Jamantina, uh, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The first diamonds discovered by the Portuguese is on my hometown. And I live, that, those mountains on the right is, used to be my backyard. And I used to dream what's behind the mountains. So. Uh, that's where I grew up. There is two very famous uh, Brazilians that was born there. One is Chica da Silva for the Hispanics, who know the soap opera Chica, and the guy who built Brasilia, the president who built the city of Brasilia, who was born in my town also. Uh, uh, One second, we have some technical issues here. So, sorry about this. Sorry. It's okay? We're having some issues with that one, so we're just going to put this one down here. So I just sorry about That's that. fine. And then we'll turn off this one. Sorry, guys, technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. So, talking to this. Uh, so, uh, this is where I was born, and Nehemiah, the famous Brazilian architect, start testing his skills in Jamantita. The picture in the middle there was one of his first public buildings that he built for, uh, he, he, he did. So, uh, April, fast forward, April 19, 1986, I arrived in New York with $500 in my pocket, not a word of English, and a dream to be a photographer. And this is, I, so is me, a week later, working in a factory in Queens. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, and, but it's still with the dream to be a photographer. So uh, I started working in this factory in Queens. Uh, then I became a porter on a, on a store here in Manhattan. And from there, I became a porter in a photo lab in Maranek. And basically, I started my photographic career cleaning up photo labs and behind the camera. And by 19, in, between that, that period, of, between 1986 and 1988, I taught myself English. Uh, I taught myself Spanish. And I had a lot of photo lab maintenance. So in 19, around 1988, I got hired by a very uh, important photo lab during several years called Colabor Programming here in New York, who, where I started working for these people when I left the program at uh, 95, which is two years after I was hired by the New York Post. Because they couldn't hire, uh, when I left, they had to hire three different people to do my work. Because I was, I ended up, I basically started there as a porter. And when I left, I was responsible for the entire maintenance of the lab, plus all the purchasing of the equipment. And the interesting thing about this photo lab, that they have a photo studio also. So, I learned a lot of photography stuff, work on that studio, but also cleaning up and doing, you know, learning what the other photographers are doing. Well, fast forward three years later, 1989, I sold my first photo to the Associated Press and started freelancing. By then, I already, you know, my English was a lot better, and I started shooting stuff for AP. And I cover everything. Uh, AP was my school uh, here in New York. Uh, you know, I covered politics, I covered sports, celebrities, and it was a fun time. March 93, Rupert Murdoch, 
uh, took over the New York Post. So in September, they were looking for photographers, and the photo editor at the time said, listen, come over. Uh, I would like to you know, talk to you. I worked for the Post for a week, and on the end of that week, he offered me a job. So I started working for the New York Post in 93, and I left in 2012. Uh, my career at the Post uh, was very exciting. I was a photographer for a lot of people. Yeah, I, my dream has came true and things like that, but I didn't feel like it was enough. So between 1999 and 2003, a lot of you know Kevin Mazur, which was one of the biggest rock and roll photographers around town. I helped him uh, organize his archive, which became the base for the Wire Image website which is today is one of the largest uh, celebrity company in the world. And while that doing all of these things, I uh, work as a consultant, but I'm still being employed by the New York Post. I'm sorry, uh, I'm not used to using microphones. <laughs> I'm not used to. Uh, so 2003, Getty Images hired me away from a Wire to help them, the entertainment uh, website. And around 2006, Seven, they went and purchased Wire Image. And stupid me, because I have left Wire, I didn't have my stock options, so I still poor. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the transaction at the time, I think it was a half a billion dollars to purchase the agency, but I, I lost my time there. Uh, this is some of the photos that I photographed for the post, uh, covers thousands and thousands of photos. Uh, I also was set photography for Sesame Street, Sesame Street Workshop, between 1999 and 2002. Uh, I did a lot of the, the set photography for Sesame Street, and it was a lot of fun. And actually, I feel very honored that they put me, they mentioned me on the book, the 40-year book that they put out uh, about the people who work for Sesame Street. They use a lot of the photos that I had taken and mentioned me on the book also. Uh, I also do a lot of volunteer work. Uh, between 2000 and 2000 to the present, I work with a Boomer. Boomer is the former, former quarterback who has a son who has cystic fibrosis, and I help his foundation. I do all the photography. Same thing with Brazil Foundation, which is an organization who cater for Brazilians. We Brazilians here helping Brazilians down there. And this image is actually was taken for Brazil Foundation, and ended up become, it became a book for the foundation to promote uh, and ask for donations and things like that. And there is another also a small organization that works at Bone Arrow Transplant that I help them volunteer also. This is part of this, uh, the book for Brazil Foundation. Well, I told you guys I worked for the Post from 2000, 1993 to 2012. 2012, I quit the Post. I just walk away and say, I'm gonna be a freelancer and everybody say, you're crazy. You know, I had a great salary, you know, uh, could take one month vacation because the time I was there, nobody pretty much bothered me. I said, but I wasn't happy. So I decided to travel 2013. I went around the world to build a portfolio. I didn't have enough photos because the photos that I had taken the, the previous 20 years belongs to the New York Post. I said, well, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna do my own stuff. So I had some savings, took that money, and I said, I'm gonna travel. Life's too short, thanks to my wife, who is very supportive. There you go. So 2014, I was hired by a Brazilian agency, uh, event agency, to, co to cover the World Cup uh, with a uh, Chilean, group of Chileans, uh, would come, these guys would come from Chile on the day of the games, and my job was to photograph them. So we traveled around the country. Chile did very well and lost to Brazil, and, which is the following week I had the tickets, they didn't go, and I photographed the game on the perspective, not from the game, but for the perspective of the Brazilians watching the game. So all my photos from that game is the reaction of the people watching and their heart loss breaking of Brazil was 7-1, you know. <laughs> so while I was in Brazil doing the World Cup, and actually I got to go back a little bit before that. 2012, a day after I left the New York Post, a photographer and his wife, his, his partner, which is uh, 
the publisher of a very boutique uh, book publisher in Brazil, asked me if I was, they want to photograph me for this book, they call Brazil Yorkers, which is, they say it was very successful Brazilians who live in New York. I say, well, I'm not successful because I just quit my job and I don't have a job anymore. So they put me on this book and I told them, listen, if one day you guys have an opportunity, please think about me. So while I was in Brazil, they find out it was in Rio, invited me to the office, and asked if I was up to do a project. They do very nice books, big, heavy, you know, nice, nice stuff. So they asked me to do a, an architecture book. I'm not an architectural photographer. And I said, well, I, and they asked me, oh, can you do it now? I said, no, I need the equipment first of all. So I came back to New York, purchased some equipment, including some tilt shift lens to, to photograph the project. And went back to Rio in September and did these photos. So, uh, but they gave me like a, a pretty much uh, a producer. I had a producer, I had a security personnel, I had a driver, and anything that I need, they were arranged for me. I need access to a building, I say, well, this here doesn't work, they will go out, out of the way and get me access to get these photographs. Some of the photos which you're gonna see here, which is gonna become this book called Formas Urbanas, or Urban, Urban Forms. Uh, this is some of the PDFs of the pages. And the guy who's designing the book actually is, there's this book is on a back burner now because the person who's doing the design is working for Tashin here in New York, designing books. And I had told them, they said, I wanted Chris to do it, and they agree. So we're waiting for Chris to return to Rio to continue this project. But after I sent these photos to them in Brazil, they liked the material and asked me to come back again and do two other projects with you guys, which you guys are gonna see now. And this is some of the photos for these former urbanas, which is, but I had I, completely access to the city, from favelas to very rich apartments, very, very rich houses. And Rio is a beautiful city, it's, but very dangerous. Uh, you know, you can walk around with a lot of cameras, show cameras. Every time I go to work, I probably look like I was going to the beach. Uh, you know, put like a sunscreen on the side of the bags and try to hide the fact that I was working as a photographer. And some of the buildings also uh, is Behind, besides photographing the buildings, I had complete access to photograph details, architectural details on this uh, project as well. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. Uh, in conversation with them, this photo uh, actually is interesting because uh, I told them, listen, I, there is something else that you can do here. and have an idea for another book if you guys are willing to do it. And they like the idea. It's a book about windows, and it's called Windows of Rio. And this past week, this is the Cathedral of Rio. And this is the Christ, which I was, they allowed me to photograph, to go up to photograph the entire statue, inside out, go on the top of his head, and Got to use my tilt shift lens because that photo is only possible with the tilt shift. Uh, so that project became the second project called Windows of Rio. And this is a PDF of a book who was printed in October. I came back to Brazil in between March and June to photograph. They already had the text. Uh, they didn't have the text, but uh, uh, the photos, I was photographing, sending photos to them, and they were sending to this Brazilian poet, very well-known Brazilian poet named Bernardo Vilhena, who is doing the text for this book. And this is some of the PDFs from the pages. The, and it, it, the book is in, in English and in Portuguese. 
And according to them, uh, it's supposed to, uh, the city of Rio is paying for those books and it will be on the, uh, the VIP bags for the people arriving for the Olympics in 2016. It was a fantastic uh, trip because uh, I got to know the city of Rio. As I mentioned before, I wasn't born there. So uh, it was interesting to, to get to know the city, travel around and, you know, seeing all the nuances of that, you know, this beautiful city. But uh, very, like this apartment probably is worth like around 15 to $20 million right in front of Ipanema, huge windows. Uh, you know, but they, uh, they have this great access in the city, so anything that I ask for, they give it to me uh, uh, in, a, in a sense of access. Uh, uh, you know, but we had a budget. You know, I can't go over that budget. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the poems of uh, Bernardo that is going to be on the book. So, we came to this project called uh, Rio ao ar livre, which is Rio on open air. And these are photos of athletes or regular Joes who practice sports in Rio. And again, they gave me free reign to create, to to go in, photograph whoever I wanted. I always uh, travel with a producer who will get the permissions, except like, you know, you have a big event, like you have hundreds to thousands of people running into the water, you can get a, like permission for everybody, but uh, this is some of the image. But I, have, I got to do things that I never done before. I'm not an athlete, like my friend Zandy, which he runs and do things, you know, but I have to climb, and there was some very crazy people doing some very interesting things. Uh, this is the first photo for this, one of the photos that is on the book, but this is not like the final uh, decision. This is going to be the, you know, it's going to be these photos on these pages. And it's around 35 different sports, all by amateurs, nothing, nobody's professional. Again, this book also is in Portuguese and English. And they are the size of a tabloid newspaper. Uh, if you guys don't know, tabloid newspapers are on this size over here. So when you open it up, <laughs> you know, I know very well tabloid, so. <laughs> it, like in this case over here, I have to fly, and I want to get the photos. They say, so I need to fly, I want to you know, get the pictures. I have to climb. <laughs> uh, and as you can see, I'm pretty high there. <laughs> you know, it's just something I've never done before. Uh, what sort of subject matter do you like to photograph the most? Like people or the, or the more abstract? Well, I, I, I'm doing a, a little bit of everything, but uh, I, I enjoy work with people. I enjoy, the thing is like, uh, when I'm with the camera, uh, I have the camera in my eye, I'm on my zone. You know, I'm happy if I'm taking pictures. Uh, I don't care if I'm shooting kids on a park <laughs> or shooting flowers. I'm taking pictures, I'm happy. I think that's the, the way I can communicate better. I'm not a great communicator, so the camera is my way of, uh, to, to, you know. And are you shooting more now in New York or in Rio? Well, I'm everywhere now, pretty much. Uh, I go to Rio a lot now, uh, now because I have other projects. That, uh, after I've done those two ones, I start offering them ideas for projects. They like it, and they're willing to pay for those books, and which is great. You know, uh, for somebody who basically is learning to start walking again, you know, because after after you work for 20 years for a company, you feel like, you know, you. 
take that out for you, you have to learn to walk again. I have to walk, uh, learn to, you know, be a freelancer again, which, is, you know, takes time. You don't build a freelance clientele for overnight. So I got very lucky to get this here, which is a great exposure. And the books is, uh, they told me it's around 8,000 copies for each book, which is huge. You know, people who's been doing books, it's like 500 copies. You know, this is 8,000 copies, which is something very, very big. Guide surf. Uh, and some of the photos, like I will see somebody on the water that looks like this guy. Well, this guy has skills. So I concentrate on that guy, wait for him to get out of the water, and then got the permission, explain the project. You know, it's like you have to, to have a talk and say, listen, we're doing this. Some people didn't like it, say, no, I don't want to be part of this. But uh, it's 25 different uh, sports being portrayed on this book. And the book probably is going to be around 204 pages or something like that. It's a huge book. This photo is taken with Canon cameras, a Fuji camera. Sometimes uh, I use also a Samsung camera, a Samsung Galaxy 2 camera, which is a Samsung built this very interesting camera around the phone. Uh, which is pretty uh, nice to work in doing social media also. And these guys do a lot of promotions for the books. So I was free, like sometimes we got a nice photo, we can post like on Instagram and they will retweet it and put it on Twitter and things like that. Surfing is a big, big deal in Rio. I had to get up a lot of times very, very early in the morning to get the shots. But I, there was like the danger, like I didn't have the security guy with me. And I said, oh, you know, take a taxi or call a taxi, get to the beach and be, you know, looking for those photos. Like this photo in particular, I have to ask a, a fireman to allow me inside this area there to photograph so I can get the buildings on the background. Because otherwise, you, all the photos would look like this. You know, we have the mountains in the background, but you don't have the city. Uh, this was very interesting photo also. This is a guy who is a sniper for the, the uh, Rio police. And his fun is to climb this mountain, and he's jumping there for around 1,000 feet from one of the Rio's mountains. He climbed the mountain in, in four hours. They wanted me to follow him up there <laughs> and to take the pictures. I said, well, I, I'm not an athlete. This guy goes in four hours running. I can run with my equipment and get there, and then I have to come back by myself. He jump. I can't jump behind him. <laughs> so I convinced them to hire a helicopter. But on a helicopter, it's also the kind of situation that you have only one chance to shoot. Because once he jumps, he takes 200 kilometers an hour of going against the, 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 the rock. And he just disappears. And he takes four hours to walk up and one minute and a half from the time to jump to land. So and he, sometimes he does that twice a day. But I think he does that for take the attention that he lives in. There's a war going on in Rio. Uh, between drug traffickers, police, and they're trying to take over things. And, and this guy, his job is to shoot people basically for a living. And I think he takes attention out jumping out of the mountain. He's a fantastic person. I, I also outfitted him with a GoPro cameras on, on a helmet and other areas so he can photograph. But I, then I photograph him all the days doing other things. That's him and his girlfriend who does also base jump, but she jumps for with the parachute already open. She just opened the parachute and jump. He used the wingsuit. And then there's this crazy who does the, the high light. And it's a thousand feet up there. And he just, they just have fun, uh, you know, walking on the ledge and going back and forth. Sorry. So 
And this also, uh, since we had hired the helicopter f to, to, to the, the, the shoot of the base jump guy, and I heard these guys were going to be up there, I said, well, if you guys are going to be out there, I like to do the photos the same day so you can use the helicopter for both. Uh, but it was very crazy. You, know, you look down, and I like a, when I, if some of you guys, uh, photographers, you know, we shoot with the door, or we don't use a door. The helicopter doesn't have a door. You just have a, a seat belt. And yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, this is Rio citizens. This is people who live in Rio, who practice. Rio is a city that uh, everybody practices for. Uh, you know, they run. You're going to see people running. You're going to see people on the on the ocean, uh, surfboards. You're going to see people with skateboards. You're going. It's like it's a wide range of sports being practiced. In soccer, it's everywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Any sports with the ball, Brazilians. You, the first gift you get as a Brazilian is a ball. It's a soccer ball. You know, uh, that's my first gift that I remember was a soccer ball. So, uh, soccer is just, just a natural thing. Sure. Uh, this is me there doing some of the work. As you can, guys can see, you know, uh, flying on the Asa Delta, you know, going to favelas, the, the helicopter, climbing, what a Christ. And it was a lot of fun, trust me. <laughs> And this is another project. It's uh, a project that is a current project. It was going to become a book eventually uh, called Citizens. And this is the last professionals, basically people who are the last on their professions, working, uh, handcraft working, and don't have anybody learning the craft from them. So I've been working on these uh, portraits, and they, they will become a book eventually, like this one here. Uh, but it was at least four years away to finish. Uh, it's a long, long work, and there's a lot of people to find because a lot of these professions, you know. This. And this is another project that I've been involved with with a partner, a uh, Brazilian fine artist uh, named Duda Penteado, who saw some of my photos, asked if he could do an interference. And we call that constructive interference, and now we have this project of uh, they use, he used my photographs to paint over, which he, basically my photographs, I can reprint them thousands of times. But when he put his magic touch on top, this become unique pieces of art. Uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions, anybody? Here. Go ahead, just yell it out. Uh, yeah, uh, she asked me if I shoot in RAW and JPEG. In this project, everything is shot RAW because it's for books. You need like a, a large file images. So when you do the proofs, uh, and you have the, the quality. But you have also the information about the image, the JPEG, the J, which JPEG don't carry everything. With the RAW file, you have more information to get from that image. Well, uh, well, depends. Uh, I shoot most prime uh, lenses. I work with the 20, 24, 25, 40, which I don't use much, a 50, 85. I have all the primes, which I don't use all the time, but it depends. If I'm going out, let's say, to shoot a surfer, I'm not bringing like a wide angle because I'm not going inside the ocean with that lens. Or, 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 or. But I, I bring like a 300. You know what I mean? Or something long range. But uh, some of the photos like, uh, was taken with like a, a wide angle. Like the, 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 pro the architecture projects, yes, they, there are a lot of use of, uh, of wide angle lenses. Especially the tilt shift lenses, which uh, for architecture projects, uh, it, it makes a huge difference. Uh, if, Guys uh, that are not photographer, if you look at a building, take a picture from the bottom, it looks like the building is falling. And the tilt shift lens correct that perspective and make the building stand up straight as you look at it, if you're looking at it. Do 
manual settings all the time. No, the manual, manual settings, except like the, on a small camera, the, the Samsung camera, which uh, have the option also to shoot uh, manual, but uh, some of this stuff on a manual, it takes too long to, to figure out. And, uh, uh, for me, it's much easier to work with the big cameras. And actually, some of the street stuff, I don't like to use the big cameras, the, which is the Canon, the Canon's EOS 1DX and the 5D Mark III. Uh, they are huge. They are huge. They are scary. And if you're photographing people, they are like very, you know, intimidating people. And so I use the Fuji uh, Explore One for people photos. And those portraits are, uh, are done with the Fuji Explore. The, the pictures. I'm oh, sorry. This, uh, it's some of these photos taken with the Fuji X Pro camera. One question, yell it out. Okay. What inspired you to photography all those years ago? Repeat it. Uh, can you repeat it again? What inspired you to photography all those years ago? Well, uh, I, I, my story is go back to Jamanchina, the city where I was born. At 16, uh, my father came, which was already divorced from my mom, came back to town, take me out of the school, and said, you're going to go work now. So I've been at work since I was 16. And I went to, to do some classes uh, in a, one of the universities in Brazil, in Minas Gerais, and I was learning tapestry, tapestry, uh, hand tapestry. Make like, you know, the, not like the carpets, but this is like manually done and very nice. So when I decided to move into New York, I said, I'm going to be a photographer. But I, I you know, <laughs> I didn't have anything, done anything serious on photography or anything like that. But then I started liking the medium so much. And I said, well, I'm going to make this my dream. But also, when I arrived, a lot of people told me, you cannot make as a photographer. You're an immigrant. You were born here, you don't speak English well, you can make it. I say, I will, and I will, and I am. I, you know, I, I'm a proof that you can, you know, anything, you can be anything you believe, if you believe in yourself, go for it. You know, don't let anybody say to you, you can't do it. Any more questions? Thank you so much. For the